Today's program has been brought to you by TechServe, New York's original and still the best Apple computer, iPod, and iPhone store and repair shop. For more information, visit TechServe.com. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network, broadcasting live from Bushwick, Brooklyn. If you like this program, visit HeritageRadioNetwork.org for thousands more. We talk about food. We talk about music. With musical dudes. Finger on the pulse. Snacky tunes. Girl, I know it's hard to fly When you're working at your nine to five So just think of me Till you get off tonight You'll be my lover, sweet baby mother There ain't no other who can break me off Like you do under the cover Baby mother there ain't no other Singing black pantsuit Sexy pump Take me out to a power lunch Tis, tis, naughty with the bits A briefcase full of sexy tricks Black pantsuit Sexy pump Take me out to a power lunch I'm appetized looking at your thighs And what's this you're touching mine? You'll be my lover Sweet baby mother There ain't no other Who can break me off Like you do under the cover Baby mother There ain't no other Deeper Deeper I can feel your beeper Deeper Deeper I can feel your beeper Deeper, deeper, I can feel your beeper. Deeper, deeper, I can feel your beeper. Well, I know you treat me best when I'm sitting at my desk. But the trick you pulled last night put me to the test. So go the mother, baby father. There ain't no other who can break me. Like you do under the water Baby father There ain't no other Black pants suit Sexy pump Take me out to a power lunch Your name is Sexy Marola Dex I'm shaved so close to tasting wax Black pants suit Sexy pump Take me out to a power lunch Silk and lace in my database Baby, I want to interface All right, welcome to Snacky Tunes. That was just Harmar Superstar, Power Lunch. Yeah. Which I used to, which is the first track I ever heard from you when I used to have a radio show at the University of Oregon. So no way. Awesome. 10 years ago or We're taking eight it years. back. Yeah, yeah. Probably 10 at this point. Yeah. Um, featuring none other than Beth Ditto. Yeah. I was like, this song is, well, that actually, that's one of the cleaner tracks on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's the radio friendly. A um, raw. Uh, well, we got uh, Harmar um, live in the studio later today. Going to talk about Chips New York, new record. Yeah. You know. Getting getting weird at Chase Stadium. The whole thing. The whole thing. Uh, but first and foremost, we have Polly G from Polly G Pizza. Welcome to uh, welcome to Snacky Tunes. Thank you. Uh, to be here. Uh, why don't you scoot a little bit closer to the microphone? Oh, you can move it closer to you. Well, how are you feel comfortable? Uh, uh, we'll move it closer. Yeah, we'll move it a little closer. Uh, lean back and relax. Lean back and relax. <laughs> um, you know, walk, thanks for coming to Roberta's. Yeah, my pleasure. I mean, you know, uh, how do you, in, in the pizza world, where do you, competitors, friendly? As I tell everybody when they see me wearing a Roberta's hat or a hat from another um, pizzeria, like today I'm wearing a hat from my favorite slice joint, uh, a place in uh, Howard Beach called New Park Pizza. We're, we're all colleagues, not competitors at all. I mean, that's a really good way to, uh, to look at it. Roberta's yeah. especially. Before I open, uh, Chris was uh, a great great help to me and when we opened the day we had our friends and family um it was a 
Can I say shit show? Yeah, you can say Great. shit show. It was a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my guys um, just really flaked out. And I asked for some help. And they sent over two of the best guys here. They sent over Angelo and, uh, and Anthony. So I mean, that's amazing. So what did you learn? I mean, we'll, we'll get to the story. But like from someone like Roberta, like, what did you take from them? Because I know that you did a lot of research. From them in particular. A lot, a lot. Well, I was inspired by them a lot. Um, I was inspired by looking at a space that really was nothing, and they did really nothing to it, and they created a place that was very, very special. I mean, you walk in here. I mean, even when they first opened, before there were people in here on a Monday afternoon packing the joint, you know, at one thirty in the afternoon. You'd walk in here and you felt you were in some place special. And it, it, it liberated me. It made me realize that I didn't have to spend a fortune trying to make some place look pretty, just work with what you have. So I learned a lot just from being here with that. I, I was inspired by their pie names. I love to have clever pie names, and they certainly are the, the, the fathers of that. Uh, in terms of, you know, just help, you know, talking with Chris, you know, I, I didn't know how to do anything. You know, he told me, well, don't put your food in the same walking as your beer. I wouldn't have known. You know, <laughs> oh, to right. Uh, um, but so let's, let's step back because um, we'll, let's say you're on your second career, or, uh, you know, uh, midlife career change. Most people would be, you know, surprised to know that you did computer programming for the first part of your life. How does one begin to make pizzas um, with a background in computer programming? Well, the, the first thing I did, I, I realized I had to do something that I had a passion for because I did something I didn't have a passion for for 30 years. And it showed because, you know, I had a mediocre career. I didn't, you know, I wasn't where I wanted to be in life. I piled up a ton of bills because although, you know, I wasn't making that much money, uh, I love life. I wanted my family to have great experiences. So I had this freight train coming at me and I was forced to, to do something that, you know, I thought I could do well. And I built an oven at home. And I started practicing. Um, what do you remember your first pie? You always remember your first pie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I have pictures of it. It looked like an amoeba. It was not round at all. It was burnt on one side, but it really did taste good. It still tasted good. And that that see the first thing I had to do when I built the oven is I had to put belief in myself that I could do it. And so that was a great experience. But let's, let's actually let's go back a little bit. Um, what like that transition between thirty years of Mediocre but secure to, uh, holy shit, I'm going to open a restaurant in an economic, down, economic downturn. What is the thought process to give other people that type of confidence? Or like, how did you, what did you feel? Well, I, I, I love to cook. So I would cook at home all the time. I, I'd look for reasons to invite people to my house to, to eat. Uh, and they'd always tell me, you know, that I should open up a restaurant. And I really didn't want any part of that because it's just too complicated. But I, I did become a pizza enthusiast somewhere along the line, I'd say in the, in the mid-90s. And I looked and I saw that, you know what? This is pretty simple. Although it's challenging, I might be able to do you know, something with pizza and, and do it well because it's simple. Right. You know? And, and that, that got me going and that emboldened me. It, it allowed me to step out and be willing to, to take the chance and start telling people that I could do it. So you know, as opposed to like... I mean, when you come to a place like Roberta's, you don't just see the pizza. You see the staff, the full menu, you know, the, all the different accoutrements, the tasting kitchen back there. But what you, you know, correct me wrong, some maybe is that an easy first step to something new. You start it small, something obtainable. Right. I proved to myself that I could actually make the pizza So first. what was the first pizza you perfected in your mind? Just a, a regular, you know, margarita pizza. And where and what was the what was the next one? Well, uh, let, let's get back to perfection. Okay, uh, I didn't. I made I made pizza at home for two years in, in this little brick oven I built outside, and I worked on the dough for most of that time. Actually, at first I was buying a dough in the supermarket. I just wanted to make the pizza, have it come out of the so oven. So you so you really step back. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And eventually, when I opened up the restaurant, I was still working on my dough recipe. You, you know, you um, you know, you look at my pizza six months in. That's when it really I locked in the dough recipe. But before that, it, you know, it took time. And you know, it's funny. The same thing happens here. The first time I came to Roberta's, I came with my camera. I love to take pictures of places. And I look back at the pictures of the pizza I had here. It's nothing 
like the pizza they serve. This yeah. is beautiful. Uh, well, with the Dakine, is that the one you ordered? Yeah, I got the Dakine. Yeah. I'm eating it right now. Yeah. I remember I got the Millennium <laughs> Falco. That was I the remember, first, yeah. first part I got. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and then, so you know, evolution. So you, how did you build the? Uh, the oven in your back. Where did the lessons come from? I found some plans online, free free plans. I went out and I bought some bricks. I had a friend who had a passion for masonry, fortunately, and he helped me do it. And uh, you know, I just uh, my son, uh, who's coming home for Thanksgiving, like so, like a good son. Uh, well, like a good son and a challenging son because <laughs> I challenged him his whole life. He he was going to the Air Force Academy. He told me he wanted to be a pilot when he was ten years old. And I encouraged him. I said, you could do it. And when he called me in September to find out how this, he was really excited about this oven I was building. Uh, he said, I'm coming home with my friend. You're going to make us pizza for Thanksgiving, right? I said, well, I don't know. It's been kind of tough. You know, the weather's been bad. It's, you know, I don't have a lot of time to build it. And he says, I better get pizza for Thanksgiving. So that's how, <laughs> you know, that's how it got done. It's amazing how um, kids can sometimes push their parents. Well, I had to <laughs> do that because yeah. I felt if I, you know, if I didn't show him that I could step out and accomplish something, he's going to think, well, I'm made from the same thing he is. Maybe I can't accomplish. So I had like a responsibility to, yeah. to do it at that point. So what was the, um, how much overlap was there between computer programming and like the pizza thing? Or was it you just like let that go and just... Well, I kept working, but there was no overlap in terms of taking advantage of skills that I had. No, but I meant like world. time frame for those. Oh, things. no. For the two years that I was making pizza at home, I was doing it on the weekends. I quit my job two weeks before um, we opened the restaurant. I, I had, you know, I didn't have the money to, to just, you know, do it without the and did, salary. Did they know at all about your pizza side skills? Would you just show up with like 10 well, pies my boss, on Monday? my boss knew because her husband was one of my investors. But beyond that, <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, they knew. You you know, know, they knew like, I was making pizza, and, but yeah. not everybody knew I was going to open a restaurant. My boss's boss, uh, he was shocked to find out that, you know, I did this. And, and what, is, what is the feeling inside of you? You know, compared to you know year twenty six of computer programming versus year one or two of, of Polyg Pizza, I, I feel like a miracle has happened to me. It's like as I was going along and I kept on trudging along, I said, "How am I gonna? You know, what am I gonna do in my later years?" And and I didn't know that this was gonna happen, and it's totally changed my life because I finally found something. I did something that I had a passion for, that and because of it, I was able to do it, and things worked out well. You know, right. and and it's, so it's like it's a relief. It's like in the back of my mind, I, I always knew that there must be something that I could do, and, and things will work out for me. But I, I just and, and what and what age? Sorry, what age was this that you decided to make this? I was fifty four years old when I decided that I was going to open up the pizza. I mean, wow, I mean it's amazing, That's awesome. I mean, I mean, I can say for you know Sean, you know, for you and I, it's like from a younger age, we have been like we want to do you want to do music, I, yeah. you know, for events and everything. We kind of live. By passion, but we could probably say we came across people who had passion that shied away from it. Oh yeah, definitely. That that's maybe had a fear or anything, and it's amazing to meet someone like you, Polly. That's like, yeah, who cares if you're not if you're not following your pa- your passion and you're unhappy? Who cares about everything else? Uh, well, I had, like I said, I had this freight train coming at me, and that really helped me too. I mean, how much, you know, how was I going to pay my bills in my later years? And that, you know, and it's amazing now that I was able to. I don't even think about that anymore. Yeah, That's awesome. Um, all right, well, we're going to take uh, a quick pause, and we're going to talk about the restaurant design, the neighborhood, the people that work for you. Um, but we're going to play a song by a band I saw this weekend called Autre Nouveau, which is uh, going to be, they just signed a Mexican summer. Um, one of the weirdest things that I've seen in a long time, um, but this track is called Sweetheart Off Their Body EP. You're listening to Snacky Tunes.
Oh, so good. Autre Nouveau, Sweetheart of the Body AP. Uh, we are back with Polly G. Um, before we get to the restaurant, uh, you were just kind of mentioning um, that you learned some lessons along the way. Uh, and I was hoping you might be able to share some of the things that you learned from. Sure. While I was in the corporate world, I learned, you know, they, they send you to training to, to get you to, you know, be more productive. And I learned a lot about uh, making commitments. There was this guy, Stephen Covey, that some people... You know, he has these seven steps or whatever. And, and I, one of the things I learned is that, you you know, commitment's a very powerful thing where you, you have to commit and say you're going to do things. And that helped me. You know, I, I, I realized that by saying that I, I was going to do this, it really pushed me along. So there were things along the way that, that I did learn in the corporate world that, that helped me, um, you know, make this happen. So, Greenpoint. You're originally from New York, right? Yes, Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. And you moved to Jersey. Yeah. And then when you started looking for a place, you know, you were in Jersey. Why, why Greenpoint? Why Williamsburg? Well, you know, when I left Brooklyn, we left 29 years ago. I, I grew up in what's now called Kensington. Uh, it wasn't called Kensington then. It was just called like Church Avenue. And um, when we left, we, you know, we were like moving out to the country. I live in central New Jersey. I mean, it was really more than suburban. And I felt at that time that we were leaving Brooklyn behind. You know, moving on to something better. But uh, as I started to look at where I wanted to open up a pizzeria, I certainly didn't want to be somebody who was, like, making pies for people to pick up, you know, at the train station and go home and watch American Idol and eat the the pizza while they're doing that. Uh, And I began to see what was happening in Brooklyn. And it's an amazing place. I really felt that all of a sudden Brooklyn was leaving me behind. And I had this urge to find a way back here. My original plan was to continue working while the restaurant was open because I wasn't sure, you know, if I'd be able to make enough, you know, money to to have the restaurant without me having my job. But I, I just had to get back here. And um, I, I was in love with Williamsburg, infatuated. I mean, I just loved the vibe. You know, I didn't want to serve pizza to people who were older. I wanted to serve to young people. You know, I wanted to be part of something new. And... Um, Williamsburg was prohibited because one of the things that I did, uh, along with building this oven in the backyard, was I befriended everyone that I idolized, all these pizza makers, uh, like the guy who owns Lucale, Mark Iacano, uh, but in particular, Matthew from Motorino, and uh, the guy who owns Fornino, Michael. I befriended them, and I asked them a lot of questions, and they were very helpful. And to open up in Williamsburg would have you know, would have been a kick in the ass to them. It wouldn't have been the right thing to do. Um, so I wanted to find maybe an extension of Williamsburg. I saw what they did here with Roberta's. This was a, a very inspirational thing. Um, I, mean, there was, I used to throw parties at a place off the Morgan Stop called the Syrup Room five, six years ago. There was nothing out here. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all industrial. It was all industrial. You would kind of run a little bit between the train station yeah. and where the venue was, like our quick step, uh, just yeah. a, a little bit. And, 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 you know, that showed, seeing Roberta's here like that, too. It showed you that it's not, it's not a foot traffic business, you know. And I, I, I said, let me find the next best thing. And I, I said, well, what about Greenpoint? Greenpoint's right next door. So I, I got in my car one night, and I drove to Greenpoint. I went on Manhattan Avenue, and all I saw was dollar stores and Polish restaurants. Now, please. I love a good Polish restaurant as much, if not more than anybody, but it's not what I was looking for. And I went back and I talked to a guy I work with in Parsippany, New Jersey, who commuted from Greenpoint every day. And I said, you know, where, you know, are there people in Greenpoint like there are in Williamsburg, like I see on Bedford and North 7th? And he says, oh, yeah. And I said, you know, I didn't see them. He said, there they are. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're hiding. I yeah. said, they ride bicycles? Oh, they ride bicycles, all right. <laughs> <laughs> they are definitely there. Yeah. So I, I went back and I found it was on Good Friday. My son was coming home uh, for Easter. And he had a flight at 6 p.m. in LaGuardia. And I said, well, let me check out Greenpoint. And I, I found a few spaces that were uh, available on Franklin Street. I had never been to Franklin Street in my life. And all of a sudden, I got there, and I was in love. I said, this is it. I found my home. And that's how I wound up in Greenpoint. I, I, I looked around for spaces for a while. There was a space that had been a restaurant. It had burned down. Or at least I thought it did. Actually, the second floor burned down. And I didn't think it was available because there was no for rent sign on there. Mm-hmm. But uh, the guy who owns Browery Lane, Ed Raven, he encouraged me to go. He said, you know, that place is for rent. You should go talk to them. I said, but there's no sign. You should talk to them. 
and that was it. And and really, the place was made. That's like the most Brooklyn thing. I just, yeah, just go in. Just go see her. Just ask her out. Just ask her out. Yeah. Just ask her out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you got to lose? So that's how I wound up there. And, sister. <laughs> and, and, and it was great because I saw the neighborhood didn't have anything like this. You know, like I, I was still wanted. Not to like what you're doing. Not at all. And I, and I said, I got to be the, I have to be the one. I, you know, otherwise, I'm going to miss an opportunity. So, um, you know, that's what I did. And it really turned out, you know, tremendously. I mean, I, there's a few other things I want to talk to you about. But um, if, you know, any of you are interested, the, the space is beautiful. Who, who designed it? Uh, Evan and Oliver Hasselgrave. There are a couple of guys. Um, I, the way I met them was, again, inspired by Roberta's. I wanted to put mismatched chairs in the space. And somebody I had interviewed for one of my positions uh, said that they had friends that worked at a place in a story called Builded Green. So I went there, I found these chairs. But on the website, what I found was a little icon that said, come check out the Manhattan Inn, built almost exclusively with materials from Builded Green. Builded Green's a salvage place, it's all old stuff. And I went to the Manhattan Inn. Long story short, I, I met them, I started talking with them, and I didn't think I could afford to have them build a place out, but... Um, you know, I was just astounded by their work, and I wanted to have something. I needed to connect with the community. I needed to bond with, with, with Greenpoint and Williamsburg. You know, I'm not like the people that are here, you know, and I thought that by getting them involved, that would help. And so I said, can you build the tables? And they said, sure. They built, you know, they came in. We have to look at the space to figure out what the tables should look like. They came in. They, they looked like they really liked the space. So... They brought all their tools in to build these tables because, it, the, you know, some of these tables are really heavy. And once their equipment was in there, that was it. They weren't leaving until they built the whole place. <laughs> Every week it was another little piece. We could put up this for you. We could do that. And, and thank God they did because, you know, there's a lot of great pizza in this city. There really is. Uh, and there are a lot of, you know, places where you could go for it. But I know that when people come into my place, it's for more than the pizza. Right. And without them, I'd be nowhere. Um, and a Oh, I was going to say, yeah, it's probably a big a big part of that is your music taste and selection. I know you were talking earlier off air. They, in particular, were very helpful. I had started building a playlist to play in a restaurant uh, about the same time I started building my oven, a couple of years before I opened. And I had this list, and it was very eclectic. I love music from the 60s and early 70s, R&B and rock. But there's other stuff I like, too. There was a lot of uh, singer-songwriters. Uh, Ron Sexsmith was a favorite of mine. A guy named Mando Sines, which probably nobody knows. He's from Austin. But just a bunch of stuff. Uh, Jason Isbell. Um, yeah. But I played this you know, I played this stuff for them while they were building the place out. I'd bring my iPod in and put it on. And they said to me, you know, Paul, you should just focus on that late 60s, early 70s stuff. And, yeah. Um, so it was really them that helped me focus my playlist because they told me what the people in the neighborhood were going to want to hear. I mean, you know, so it was a great marriage. And, uh, you know, you kind of upped the ante um, by telling us, you know, six days a week at the restaurant and then Mondays are just like music Mondays for you, which essentially defines you as living the dream. Yeah. I, I just, I, we, we, there's an award around here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but you definitely get get that award because you know it's passion seven days a week and and that, you know i always dreamed of, of doing what you're doing right now um you know having like a radio show and i don't have a radio show but i realize i do because all the music that i'd want to play for people i can i could play now right you know and and and, and it's great and i'm i'm finding more music all the time 40 50 year old music because i want to put new stuff on there i found i was a big james gang fan oh, they yeah. had a song they covered Lost Woman, which was a Yardbird song. And it was on their first album, and I loved that song. But I didn't want to have a lot of repetition on my playlist. I, there was a live album they did. Just last night, I, I, had, I had added it to the playlist. Let me add it on there. I want to put more stuff on. I couldn't believe how good that song was. Yeah. You know? I'm, I mean, I kind of, you know, the reason why I got into DJing was because I had left my original radio show and still wanted to play music for people. And then, you know, DJing exploded. And then, you know, as DJing, you know, tapers off or takes different forms, like coming back and curating music guests and food guests. It's like you just want to share things that you care about with people. And, and the, the greatest compliments I get are from people who come in and they and they they compliment my playlist. Unfortunately, most of them are my age. But, <laughs> but there are a lot of other people who do, too. The greatest thing I've ever had written about me, and not that, not that there's been that much written about me, but... Eater Magazine did this list of like 10 ways to make your restaurant better or make your restaurant less boring, I think it was. And the guy from Eater, his name is Greg Morbido. 
Uh, he wrote, you know, have a playlist that you don't hear in 75% of the restaurants in, in New York. And, you know, he, he, he pinned out Momofuko and the Frankies. Of course. And me. And, and, and I, I tell people about it all the time because... Um, to close this out, give us like the three songs that really exemplify your restaurant and your kind of way of life. Well, I just I, songs that I love hearing in there. There was a song uh, by a band called Spooky Tooth. weren't that well known in the '60s, but this song, Oliver of uh, you know Evan and Oliver, who built the place, he would love to hear this song come on. And every time it comes on, I just I just go crazy. And there's another song, <laughs> most importantly, and it was the first song I ever played in my restaurant. I'm gonna well up here. Oh, I don't even careful. think about that. The very first song I played when the restaurant opened was a song by the Impressions called We're a Winner. And it was a song about uh, black people coming up in the 60s and, and blossoming and, you know, getting rid of the shackles they had. And I'd always sing, you know, I'd always listen to that song and, you know, it, it pumped me up about making a step and, you know, achieving something. That's and I just awesome. love that song. I know that's only two songs, but... Yeah. That song was just I'm, incredible. I wish you could play it right now. I know. I wish I could too. Well, Paul, thank you for uh, thank you for sharing. Well, this, this, believe yeah, me, it's my pleasure. This is actually really um, this is inspiring. Yeah, I and think you need your own show. Yeah, actually. I think you're Apology your own show. Radio. Um, Joe, uh, you know, take you note. Wanna, take Apology, note. Apology, Apology, Apology needs show. show. I'm filling out the paperwork right now. Amazing. Good. Good. Um, so you're gonna stick around for a little bit, right? Absolutely. I'll yeah, have hang to. out. Um, so we got a couple tracks, a couple more CMJ favorites. Um, first one is uh, Io Echo who yeah. Harmar played with, uh, which we'll talk about. Shout out to I Am Sound. And then the other one is Isaac Delusion, uh, who I saw at the school night showcase on Tuesday, the McKittridge. Shout out to Matt and Chris. Um, this is Snacky Tunes. Uh, we got Harmar live in studio. Talk about a plethora of things. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll be right back.
right, Isaac Delusion, Waiting. Um, all of these you can find on Spotify uh, if you are curious about them. We're just kind of passing over the... Uh, <laughs> pass the torch. Passing the torch, passing the, the, the mini plug. Um, can I call you Sean? Yes. We can do Sean. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sean, a.k.a. Harmar Superstar. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. Thanks, man. Uh, really happy that you're here. Really been uh, great seeing your face around town. Yeah, I'm a real local now. Yeah, you're like a real local. Yeah, like, like, happening. oh, hey, man, what's up? I was a fake local for years not living here, but everyone thought I lived here, so it was kind of a secret of mine that I was secretly in L.A. just laying on my couch watching TV <laughs> um, while everybody was talking about me. Li- I'm just kidding. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I mean, let's, I mean, because we, we so, I so really get to this. What, uh, what made the move uh, a reality? What um, made you become a perma-local? Well, to be completely, frankly honest, I walked away from my house that I owned. And I just stopped paying, and I left. And I was like, it's time to change. I'm going to New York. The American dream. Yeah. I'm living the just, American dream. Just leave it all behind. Yeah. Did you even lock the door to when the you left? To new country. Uh, I did, because I was going to squat there for a while, because I thought that would be a, a hilarious option, a chapter in my life that would be... Good to this is about. the other side of when you live on your passion, you just got to walk away <laughs> from some things sometime. Uh, but I was kind of like feeling creatively stagnant in L.A. after a while, just... Uh, just the the good weather constantly kind of actually grates on you after a while. For me, I like seasons. You know what I mean. So. I would I would say that the um, most productive time is like when it's winter. You yeah, know, when you're hunkered down. I mean, I'll write like could... three albums in the winter and like three scripts and then like live off of that for the. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just get it done and like cave out and have a good time. I mean, I have friends that have left LA and moved here, and then they'll go out to LA in like December for work, and they'll be like, "I got nothing done." Like it was just nice enough that I just went out. Yeah, all totally. the time. No, that's kind of how I felt, you know. And you're kind of just waiting for people to get off work at that point. When you're not working, it's it's kind of maddening. You know? Um, so you're out here. Yes. Which neighborhood did you just move to? I live in Williamsburg. Oh, welcome, Graham Stop. Oh, Graham Stop. Yeah. Oh, we're all kind of you know. right in the right in the hood. Um, and you just finished a record, right? Yeah. Well, I'm just putting the finishing touches on it now. I just signed with. Uh, Cult Records, which is Julian Casablancas's new label, and uh, he's going to finish the record with me. We're just doing a little bit more production on it. But what's the uh, process going to be finishing it? How's um, he? How's he stepping in? Um, well, he's got you know he's he's got amazing vocal sensibilities. Mm-hmm. So for the most part, we're going to go in and redo uh, the main vocals just with some like little melody ideas, little tweaks here mm-hmm. and there, and then edit the songs a little bit and maybe do another one or two. But yeah. And how did you record the record this time around? I went to Austin, Texas, and I recorded with uh, Jim Eno from Spoon, the drummer, um, at his place. It's a great studio there. I mean, you've been at this for a very long time. Yeah. And it's been amazing. <laughs> I mean, I was saying, like, Power Lunch was, like, when I was, like, 10 years ago. Yeah, and that's, uh, like, my third band that I toured. You know what I mean? Yeah, Armar's, sh- like, my third. Shout out the first two. Well, there's Give a band called reference. Calvin Crime that was on AMREP when I was, like, 16 or 17. Okay. And we toured a lot. And then I was uh, I have a band called Sean Na Na that I kind of periodically still do. I feel like that's still like that's always like right right on the edge. Yeah. Like like it comes back in, cuts yeah. across Harmar and like kinda goes out of focus yeah. and then it's kind weaves of back in. It must be like you know, whatever I feel like. But um Harmar is by and far the you know, most prominent. He's my breadwinner. <laughs> he brings home the bacon. Harmar, come on. Get out there. Go earn, go earn a little for daddy. <laughs> go take your pants off at a nightclub. Yeah, exactly. People people love it. Um, well, well, let's let's get a song. Okay. Let's, let's give a little reference. All right, uh, you want to hear a new one? Yeah, yeah, let's hear a new one. All right. This one's called Prisoner of Love. Live on Snacky Tunes. It should be playing. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That was the beginning. Without us talking. Oh, okay. Put me to the test, girl. I'm under arrest No, we won't sleep Till the streets are clean And the levee broke now We got fire before smoke somehow The results are in 
Negatives are positive Cause I'm a prisoner of love When it rains it pours Oh, we're not jumping up now You'll take me back in your arms Behind bars No more living large, girl We're flirting with danger We're Dancing with strangers Now it's just you and me, girl Inmate number 715-203 Yeah, you will be my captor Sunshine, my big time, my laughter Cause I'm a prisoner of love Whoa. When it rains, it pours Oh, when I jumping up now You'll take me back in your arms Prisoner, yeah, I'm a prisoner of love in its pouring soul Yeah, we're not coming out now No Talk ain't always cheap now I made a promise that I'm gonna keep somehow Show you what I'm made of A little prisoner No prisoner Yeah, prisoner Prisoner of love whoa, whoa. When it rains it pours Yeah, when I'm toughen up now Won't you take me back in your arms Prisoner of love Just a little prisoner of love oh. Yeah, when I'm toughen up now you take me back in your arms <laughs> Where'd they come from? Oh, I see them. The Roberta staff. Roberta staff, what's up, guys? Is that guys. MC Todd out there? Yeah. Yeah, it's all happening. MC Todd. Everyone's gathering. Check, check, check the internet for that new release on MC Todd. <laughs> Polly G, Polly G, I bet you didn't think I sounded like that. Yeah, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> the word that came to mind is juxtaposition. I'm <laughs> did not expect to hear yeah. that. Your eyes kind of lit up. I, I, I said, we can, we can have a two-hour discussion about music as soon as this is over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. Um, so your vocals have been lent to other projects. Uh, I feel like very lucky I got to see you tour with Gangs. Oh, yeah, man. Which was like That's so at fun. the uh, Natural History Museum in L.A. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about that. I okay. love that record. Oh man, it's I mean, the best. it's it's. I mean, I put it on last night, um, and it was just like, "Fuck, this is one of the best records." It is love making music. It is love making music. Everything's sixty nine BPMs. Yeah, I mean, let's. I mean, just talk to me about that project because I've never got a chance to really sit down and. Um, yeah, it. I mean, it's sort of like uh, the brainchild of Ryan Olson, who produced like the Polisa album and a bunch of other who great are stuff also out of Minneapolis. Yeah, incredible. Channy, the singer, is actually in Gangs yeah. too. So. Uh, he kind of put together the soft rock thing with a couple of the guys from Solid Gold in Minneapolis, and I think, and with the idea of getting Justin Vernon from Bon Iver involved, and sort of just became this behemoth, like, 25-member band. And it was really only supposed to be a project where they were going to put out the album, play one show with everybody there, and then break up. And it sort of took off so, so much that uh, a tour happened, and then more tours ha like you know what I mean like we did yeah. the whole country I mean we never really went out overseas even though we're supposed to um, but that's just because of Ryan's like philosophies of like wanting to like take a cruise ship there you know what I mean right. like he like he made these ridiculous demands that were great but didn't happen yeah. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll buy you plane tickets cruise ship 
Yeah. <laughs> nah, how about a cruise ship? Tugboat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to make this as weird and hard for you as possible. Um, but I mean, and what was touring like that? I mean, there really were like twenty five. Yeah. Few, I mean, it was it was well, for the touring uh, band. It kind of was pared down to like ten or twelve people most of the time. But like, there's always like two bass players and like ninety guitar players and saxes going. I mean, it's a very sax heavy band. It's yeah. Very, and how do you feel like that fits into like the overall like Harmar story or like um, projects like that? It's cool. I mean, it was just like it was perfect timing for me because like I was in between records of my own. And it just sort of came up, and I recorded this George Michael cover with them. Did one more try. It's like a bonus track that's out, and we did it even slower than the original, so it's like six minutes long or something. Um, um, <laughs> for anyone that wants to also hear, uh, the NPR music app has like a live Gangs concert oh, on it, and like that was like kind of like you know scroll back, scroll back, yeah, scroll back. <laughs> yeah, really, sweet. really amazing. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, I, yeah. Um, so you moved here and you've started doing a podcast, yeah, which yeah. is which is really interesting um, because I think it's like such an easy way for to have an output without having to put out music. Yeah, but no, it's great. Curious, yeah, like, it comes out every week. It's called Nocturnal Emotions. It's on Earwolf. Um, what is Earwolf? Earwolf is uh, Earwolf dot com is kind of like a they're like a podcast sort of label. You know, like they do um, comedy bang bang and. Uh, who charted and just so many shows. Is that like all puns? <laughs> no, no. Uh, but you know, it is a lot of comedy guys. Yeah. Like I think they're they're working on like maybe a Mister Show one or something. Like there's some some cool stuff in the works. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but uh, I, I don't. You can know. always promise things, and, and you yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, who's gonna check you? How, I can't. I, I can't even deliver this promise. Yeah. So I'm, just, I'm just talking out my ass here. Obama's uh, doing one. <laughs> yeah, we got you know, yeah, it's a Royal Rumble. Hulk Hogan's in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it's it's really fun. Like you know, it's just uh, they're long conversations about embarrassing moments in like my guests' lives, and it's sort of like I run the gamut of guests of sort of anybody interesting, you know. Who've uh, past guests been? Um, I've had Macaulay Culkin, Ellen Page, Gavin McInnes, uh, John Daly is going to be on this week. Um, and I feature like some bands. I did like Minus the Bear and My Jerusalem last week. Interviews with them. Uh, you know, MNDR, uh, just uh, whoever, you know, whoever's to fi- around to fill of. that downtime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like fuck. I should start a podcast. Yeah, or I something. Know. But uh, like, really, it's not that much work. You talk to somebody for like forty-five minutes, tape it, and then make an intro and an outro each week. You know, it's like it's kind of about a few hours of work a week, and it's it's very rewarding. Do you have um, besides <clears throat> embarrassing stories? Like, is there you know something you try to convey from? You have a wide range of guests. You know, yeah. Is there something you tried, like, an overarching theme, or is it more just a conversation between two people? It's a conversation. I mean, it normally gets kind of weird, and, and you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's me, so it gets, like, a, a bit stony. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or something. Yeah. Like, we, we like to go on tangents and riff. and um, uh, No, but, like, it's, that's just sort of a jump-off point. But I like to kind of explore the darker sides of people's lives, too, because that's, like, you know what I mean? Like... That's the real stuff, and it's yeah. really interesting. And I don't know the whole the whole vibe of the thing is very nighttime. I mean, that's the thing that we were saying before. It's like, yeah, everyone can be like, yeah, we like put out our demo, and we got the record deal. It's like, yeah. you know, I just showed up to Hollywood, and I got my first gig. It's like, yeah, yeah what yeah. happened? It's like, well, there were two years of drug addiction, and yeah. uh, I slept in a van for three years yeah. and ate cornflakes without milk. Yeah, it's like, oh, 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 that oh, is that what you wanted? Oh, okay, that's the real thing. I mean, it's like we were saying before. It's to know those stories is you know to know that everyone goes through it and like. Kind of like even when you're going through the shit to know that other people are experiencing it, makes it easier. Yeah. Oh, totally. No, you want to share a low? A um, low? I'm trying to think. I mean, there there's so many. I mean, I think like every three years, like the money just runs out, and that's like not even really a low. I mean, it's kind of like that's when I get motivated. I need it. I need to run out of my money so that I have like some sort of like like survivalist instinct to like output like a script or like an album, and that's like where the actual songs come from you know what I mean because if I was just happy and content all the time I don't think I'd feel driven to make anything do you want to play a song (laughs) that uh, came from a low Uh, yeah this one's real obvious (laughs) this is another new one called why 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 let me uh... alright you ready ready why 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 is me I missed another opportunity Another day gone I'm another day older Earth beneath my feet Only grows colder I need to take a trip To the Golden Gate Bridge 
Contemplate my life and all the things I miss Let loose my feet as my feet slip away Whoa, dive shock before my legs break Wap, 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 woe is me I don't deserve another breath in me, you see I squander things, the lessons of lovers Somebody have some mercy, help me put myself under I was learning to tie knots down a fisherman's wharf When the boys got the call, they had to go to war They left me hanging how to tie this noose Oh, it's just a little too loose Yeah, I'd cut myself, but I'd never bleed Just another failure got me in long sleep To hide the pain building up in me Another secret that I need to keep Yeah, yeah, yeah Wah, 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 wah Wah, 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 oh Wah, 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 oh, 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 oh Wah, 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 oh Wah, 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 woe is me I missed another opportunity You see another day gone It's another day older Wap, wap, wow, all is me Yeah. Yeah. This one's about not being a crybaby. Polly, comments? <laughs> I, I'm just blown away. <laughs> well, well, thanks, we man. have to get you on my playlist. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring in that. some stuff. I'll trade you for some pizza. There you go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. there, there it is. That's how it goes. That's down. how you get out of the lows. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, speaking of food, do you uh, what's uh, what's on the diet these days? What do you what are you eating? Um, you know, what have you found in Williamsburg that is like? Shh, oh, you know. you know what the best is is Mesa Kaiwakan, that that Mexican place. It's really good. Like like super like L A level like Mexican food. You Where know? is it? Uh, it's right on Graham Avenue, like right in between Consulier and Skillman. Oh, that place. Yeah. It's okay. So it's next to, uh, like Sal de Mer. Sal de Mer, and that, that place pl- is great too. That place is great. Yeah. Um, there's so much stuff over there. Uh, I don't know. I, I love eating at the Commodore too. It's that the hot, uh, the hot breast and the nachos. Are I so mean good. the Commodore, I mean, I think they're like one of the few restaurants that got like one, like bar food that got one star. That's so weird. Yeah, it's so good. Have you, Paul? Have you eaten there? The Commodore, not, the best fried chicken. It's, they it's know right here. Right, yeah, it's right across the street from Saint Assam. Um, and the nachos. The nachos are yeah. like they're like Austin, Texas, real queso nachos. I think that's like, what we ate on that night out uh, before Fourth of July. We started with the nachos. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And we which did are that. just uh, fantastic. They're so good. They're so good. So, so what's coming up next? So the record's going to finish. And then yeah, well, that'll come out probably March. Uh, I don't know, I'm just writing some TV stuff right now and trying to get that going through by the time... What's the uh, TV stuff? I, I, I'm developing a show. I've been developing a show for HBO for like a few years um, that wasn't going to get shot, and now it might. I, everything's so weird on TV. It's slow. So, I mean, I mean like, whatever happens, slow. whatever we do, it'll come out in like two years. So. Not even worth really <laughs> mentioning, but like... Promises. Promises. Obama will have a guest. Paid a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's here and there. Um but yeah, no, just working on the podcast, uh, be playing shows. I'm gonna go to Fun 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 Fest like, in a there. couple of weeks. Sweet, yeah, uh, which it really is like one of the most fun fun. Yeah, fun and the lineup's great. Run DMC is playing. I'm yeah, psyched about that. Japan Droids are playing. Japan Droids. This is, is the, it's just so good. There's so many. I mean, uh, I X is playing all of uh, Los Angeles, I think, or Wild Gift, one of the two. Oh, really? I love both of those. Albums. I mean, just you know, we were talking about it before. You're going to see Crosby, Stills and Nash tonight, right? Yes, I am. What what album are they playing? Their, their first album, their self-titled album. I mean, it's just get the fans what they want. But you can play a few new ones. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I think like you know, yeah, do an encore and play like five more. But you do do the album that people want to hear. Yeah, you know? and nice. then then they can leave, or the true fans can stay. <laughs> I will say this though: I just saw the David Byrne St. Vincent their new show, and they published oh. a new record, and it's incredible. I want to see. I mean, they're both so good. I There's, can only imagine it's, together. It's, it's so good, and the choreography, and I mean, it's just really one of the best shows I've seen and you're just like and they weave in their old stuff with the new stuff and oh they, that's awesome they do it really they do it really well I try, I try to do like you know I try to mix it up do two old ones and a new one or, you know what I mean like I feel like throughout the show keep, yeah keep people like 
perked up from. But I mean, your music is also like really like I had never heard those two songs. Yeah, and, like they're also like upbeat songs, or upbeat songs. Yeah, it's not like hey, here's a new one. It's super slow. It's six minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please not, don't go to the bar. I'm not pulling too many punches. Yeah. I mean, it's vibe wise, a little different, but it really does. Yeah, it fits in with the set really you know, well. So. You know what I love about that song? Is it, it sounds so upbeat. Yeah, it's yeah. So dumb. I That's my favorite. Like, like, I love like Gilbert O'Sullivan. Like, Alone Again Naturally is one of my favorite songs, and it's really poppy. But then you listen to the lyrics, and they're like the most. You're like, oh shit, down. This guy's <laughs> gonna jump off yeah. or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there, there's a great song by the Style Council. Um, oh yeah, uh, which uh, which one? Uh, I forget the name of the, the the title now. I can't believe it's not coming. I just absolutely love it. But it was a very angry song, and it was just so happy. Yeah, another great one is uh, Bluebird by oh. Leon Russell. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's Harry, one of the Harry Nielsen. Songs Harry you've Nielsen ever heard. does that a lot too. Like he's he's kind of the master of that stuff. Those guys are my those are my dudes. <laughs> um, well, I want to get one more song in, but um, want to get people the nuts and bolts of where to find you, where to get the podcast. Oh yeah, um, you can just go to earwolf dot com and look for Nocturnal Emotions with Harmar Superstar, or go to iTunes uh, Music, or go to podcasts and iTunes, and then look under the music category, and it should be there. Uh, you can just look it up on iTunes, I guess too. Um, so yeah, you can subscribe; it's free. Get it every week. Website, Twitter. Awesome. Uh, yep, yeah. or just follow me at Harmar Superstar, you know, and, that and sort of thing. I, I update every week on Twitter where where to find it too, and uh, almost every day on Instagram as well. Oh yeah, I, and, <laughs> and, I, and I can't say get the Gangs record. Get oh a, yeah, get a Harmar record, get it, yeah, and get a Gangs record. Yeah, definitely. Find a loved one. We're working on some sort of like other s- projects, spin off things right now that are, yeah. that are happening. I would so say cool. research the Gangs record because like Pulika's on there, isn't like. Um, what other uh, guys from Marijuana Death Di- Squads, Megafon, uh, Bony Fair, a lot of that band. Um, there's so many people have played in it. Um, the could, Rosebuds. I mean, there's just like it's just people from all over the country. You could really get like a good starting point. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, thanks for being on. Oh yeah, man, Polly. Thank you as always. Yeah, Paulie, great pleasure. Uh, and um, are you gonna take us out with one more track? Yeah, I'll do. Uh, I'm gonna do Tall Boy. Uh, the s- single off my last album. I'm a cry, baby. There's no place to go. So shed your clothes. We'll stop, drop, and roll. I need a toe, boy. You crack it open with me. Don't be shaking. Come on, let out the steam. Where's my tall boy? Satisfy my needs. Feel like drinking. Come on, get inside me. Me and my girls will roll up. You know you wanna check us out. Beats in the backseat blow up. Turn the whole scene. Still talk to shit about Monday. The weekend is over now. Not meeting no one halfway. Amateurs get the hell. I don't see no ashtray, so I'm gonna use the ground. Ladies, let's call for hairspray. Back door is open. You all know the party's jumping. Everything is going for free. Gonna grab a piece of something. Take it home. I need a tall boy. Where's my tall boy? Don't think I'm falling in love now. This is nothing but pure lust. Wanna use you up and get out like the kids? I come up, puppy eyes are broken. I'm not trying to be mean. Queen of the party, spoken. Jump on the floor with me. Yeah, the DJ is killing my groove. Just got the text you sent me. Time to make up, making the group back to my house. Spread it through the VIP. All the pretty people line up the couch Till we get pro I need a tall boy Where's my tall boy? We'll stop, drop, and roll. I need a tall boy. Crack it open with me, don't be shaking. 
Come on, let out the steam, where's my dog? Satisfy my needs, feel like three kids so Come on, get inside, I need a tall boy so Crack it open with me, don't be shaking Come on, let out the steam, where's my tall boy Satisfy my needs, feel like three kids so Come on, get inside me Oh yeah, there it is there. Thanks for listening to this program on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. You can find all of our archived programs on our website or as podcasts in the iTunes store by searching Heritage Radio Network. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Heritage underscore Radio. You can email us questions at any time at info at HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization. To donate and become a member, visit our website today. Thanks for listening.